Uh, it's good. There's a story you once told, and uh, I'll, it had to do with World War II. And oh, you were I once, know. I know the one about the dentist. Yes. This thing true. is uh, stranger than fiction. Well, it's true. But to make it short, I had some dental work to be done. You know, they put in temporary fillings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had never had it done before. I, you know. Uh, what, is it, what, what is it? Lead? Uh, they put, I think in those days they were putting in temporary lead fillings. Yeah. yeah. It was quite a while ago. During the war? Yeah. And. Uh, World War II. Yes. <laughs> and I had several, upper and lower. And I went to work that day and I got home very late. And it was, I don't remember what year, but it, it was after they had taken the Japanese out of uh, California and unfortunately put them in the camps, which was a very sad time in California. And uh, we were all on our guard, you know, about many things. There had been a Japanese submarine um, sighted in Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. and a Japanese fighter plane had been sighted going over our home one evening. It was, it was touchy times. Anyway, this particular night was about 1.15. And I was driving alone. I had 35 miles to drive, and it wasn't, wasn't any fun. It was just a normal night. I wasn't frightened or anything. I was just driving along, and um, a road that I'd taken many times. And all of a sudden, I heard music. But I mean, with a great beat, you know. And I turned, looked down to turn off my radio, and it wasn't on. And I turned around and looked to see if there's anyone behind me. And the music was getting louder and louder and louder. And I realized it was in my mouth. And it was beating in my ears. I, yeah, I, I could hear the tune and everything. I recognized the tune. And then it started to fade out. Yeah. And I thought, what the hell was that? You know, what could it possibly be? And I didn't know what it was. So the next day I mentioned it. To, at the studio to Buster Keaton. And he said, uh, Where, what street were you on, Moore Park? And I said, yes. He said, you went by the radio station. You picked it up. Well, you got any fillings? I said, yes. He said, you picked it up in your teeth. <laughs> well, I could hardly wait to go by there again. <laughs> and I, 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 never, I didn't go by at the same time of night, so nothing happened. Right. There was no music playing, but I could hardly wait. Call in a request. Uh... Right. <laughs> but about... Five nights later, because I had to wait, I don't know, a couple of weeks for those teeth that I that were getting fixed. I was going up another street, uh, almost home, and I was passing four vacant lots that were all raised uh, so they could build the Birmingham Hospital. And uh, as I went by there, I heard, and I'm picking it up on my teeth. You mean? Yes. And... I stopped the car. Then I looked around. No Morse code, like. And I backed the car up, and it got stronger and stronger, and I kept on backing it up until it really got strong, and my whole jaw was vibrating. Like this. And then I got the hell out of there. I went boom like this, because it was very late. And I couldn't wait to get back to MGM the next morning and tell the security office, and they found an underground Japanese transmitting... Transmitting, transmitting radio station. Radio station. Honest to God. That is, in, is that a great story? Yeah. 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 But then they that just found it was one of the gardeners calling one of his friends. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, but they true. really, yeah. and they captured them, and they, uh, you helped them? Uh, I don't know what happened to yeah. them. I just turned it over. Let's have a look at those teeth that helped win the war. <laughs> <laughs>